Hello, hello, welcome to episode five of Drews. Today, I'm going to talk to you, like I said in episode four, I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to jump and talk to you about Bertolt Brecht. But a bit about Bertolt Brecht that you're probably coming across as new. Now, I'm assuming knowledge about Brecht, I'm assuming knowledge, but to sum Brecht up, if you don't know who Brecht was, Brecht is was a German playwright, dramatist, who began working in the 20s, making uh, Lehrstücke, um, learning plays, to kind of tell and convey um, a moral or an idea. And then he progressed into creating more expressionist, uh, more non-naturalistic theatre. But when the rise of Hitler and fascism within Germany, he went into exile, but then ended up his work in East Germany that was under communist rule. Brecht is most famous for epic theatre. Now, epic theatre is the kind of idea about distancing. Actors do not emotionally connect necessarily fully with their characters and allow the audiences to have a, a, a distance. So Ver from Dung's effect, distancing. You've also got placards, storytelling, narration, um, a play in a play, um, like the Caucasian chalk circle. But a bit I'm going to talk to you about Brecht is his late work. And this comes from Brecht on Theatre, the third edition from 2015. It's called Dialectical Theatre. Now, the argument is, there was an argument made by um, when, I, when, Brecht, when um, I worked with a man called David Allen, um, who's director of Midland Actors Theatre. We did a project with him. Newman students did a project with him. And when I talked to him about that, I mentioned it. I always remember he said, well, it was probably because at this point, Brecht was talking about Stanislavski as well. Naturalism. Because he was in East Germany under communist rule and they liked, they, they admired Stanislavski in work, the argument is Brecht had to tailor his work to the context he was in. And that's just a slight tangent, but it's interesting to see how it developed because dialectical theatre, if I read you the quote, dialectical theatre stood on dialectics, sums that up as thesis, antithesis, and synthesis so you find one thing and the opposite and you create idea from it brecht says that the changeability of the world stands on its contradictoriness in things people and events there is something that makes them the way they are and simultaneously something that makes them different so what you're doing is you've got everything is one thing but it's something else so that might be a technique you might want to look at. If you're looking at character, you're looking at plays or you're looking at drama methods. Well, what's the thing? What's the character thinking? What are they not thinking? And what's a synthesis of that? Or you as the actor, what's your motivation? What's the opposite of that? And then what does that combine to if you connect them together? It's a very interesting way to look at how processes change based in context, based in motivation. But my question I want to put to you is why is something only one thing or another? What if there's a third thing that it is or a fourth or a fifth? And this is the argument that I have with this, is that things aren't just necessarily one thing or another. How you react to a situation, how you react to COVID-19 at the moment, it's neither good or bad. It's not just good or happy or positive or negative. There's ramifications and little sub-branches of either of them. That is why dialectics arguably is more than just one thing or another.
understanding the changeability of people and the changeability of drama is more than just one thing or another. And I say this because that's my critical analysis of Brecht. And I said in the last video, put your voice into your work. If you can critically analyse the things you're looking at, whether it's an acting method, uh, a drama and education method, a, a history of theatre, having your critical opinion is going to elevate you. As long as you back it up, and that's the point, you back it up with evidence all the time. You don't just go, this is my opinion and that's it. So you're like, bye, 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 bye. No, you back it up. Always back it up with evidence. So you back it up with the theory, but then you apply it to show So that was quite a lengthy me talk, just talking at you again. And I promise there's going to be a bit different in the next videos. But I wanted to offer that to you as an example of how you can put your view and your ideas into the work that you do. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves, each other and the world around you. And I'll see you tomorrow.